some 40 years ago. UNESCO started waking up the souls of history, lying dormant all over the globe. And Korean cultural heritages that have remained dormant for over a millennium began to stir. What are the treasures of Korea chosen by UNESCO? What are the secrets kept in their souls? Magnum Photos member Patrick Zachman captures the spirit of the millennium old city. Shards of earthenware dating back to before the 10th century are at last revealed. When layers of dirt are removed, the sunlight shines on the remnants of lives from 1,000 years ago. Patrick's camera is standing by to breathe life into these ancient relics. Et par conséquent, la photographie documentaire, pour moi, est une façon euh, personnelle de rendre compte du monde et de la vie euh, des gens. C'est-à-dire que c'est un aller-retour entre son monde intérieur, le monde intérieur du photographe, je dirais presque de l'artiste, et le monde extérieur euh, auquel euh, il fait face. Patrick says he became a photographer because he could remember much. He spent a long time searching for the identities of various cultures and immigrants through his photos. He focused particularly on recording the lives of Chinese immigrants who had wandered many countries, overcome many ordeals, before finding somewhere to settle down. Patrick ceaselessly wonders about human identity. Then, what origin of life will he find here? Here in Gyeongju, excavations continue all year round, unearthing countless precious treasures. And uh, so an event when you see somebody finding uh, some object or a ball, but at the same time it's weird because there is the highway just next by, so it's you know a kind of contrast of uh, the modern society, modern world, modern Korea, and uh, ancient time. But it's uh, it's fascinating. Before constructing a new building the site must be inspected for any presence of historical relics. Par exemple, en Corée du Sud, où euh, tout est extrêmement moderne, finalement, très lié à la haute technologie, euh, c'est un monde déjà plongé dans le futur, euh, eh bien, la photographie est, est importante autant que le maintien de ces traditions, parce que les gens ressentent le besoin de cet ancrage vers le passé, cet ancrage euh, à une histoire. Gyeongju has been held in high esteem as the capital of Shilla Kingdom, which survived for 992 years. Myriad relics from that period are still preserved here. In 2000, UNESCO categorized various cultural assets scattered around the city into five historic areas, collectively known as Gyeongju Historic Areas. In the Tumuli Park Belt, which consists of royal tombs, 
The hearty laughter of elderly women fill the air. The timeless history of Gyeongju is but a part of their everyday lives. <laughs> this way? Yes. Man? Man? Uh, this, this side, side the woman. Woman, woman. A woman in crown. Queen. Oh, queen. No. Historic queen. sites in Gyeongju have yielded splendid wealths. The Heavenly Horse Tomb, Chan Machong, shows how Shilla tombs came to safeguard such riches. During the Shilla dynasty, treasures were buried in the coffin with the deceased, which was then covered with gravel and dirt. Such huge burial mounds have kept the gold crowns and other precious items safe from grave robbers. The drawing on a 1,300-year-old saddle flap is the only known painting from the ancient Shilla dynasty. Chamsongdae, the oldest astronomical observatory in East Asia, proves that ancient Koreans used science to track the movements of the skies to determine their farming activities. Patrick faces an ancient monument that has withstood 1,350 years of time. But why does he hesitate to photograph the enduring structure? When you talked about this second project, which had qui avait trait à l'UNESCO, donc euh, à tous les euh, l'héritage euh, mondial, donc euh, euh, coréen. Euh, pour ma première réaction, ça a été euh, de me dire euh, qu'est-ce que je vais pouvoir photographier, parce que je ne suis pas un photographe de paysage, je ne suis pas un photographe de, de monuments. Euh, Moi, ce que, ce que j'aime bien faire et ce que je fais euh, d'habitude, c'est de photographier les gens. Leur, la vie des gens, bien sûr, dans l'environnement, euh, mais euh, j'ai besoin des gens, quoi. Just then, an old woman catches Patrick's attention. He quickly follows her movement with his camera. <laughs> and succeeds in capturing a fleeting moment. Bon, ça donne cette image que j'aime bien parce que il y a évidemment un lien entre entre le temps, la vieille pierre et cette vieille dame qui qui a l'impression, on a l'impression qu'elle qu'elle se fond dans ce décor du passé. Et puis à sa canne verticale qui rappelle la verticalité de de cette petite tour. Darkness descends on the millennium-old city. Tonight, Anapji, an artificial pond made during the Shilla dynasty, is lit up brightly. It is as if we've been transported back to those lavish times when banquets were given by the picturesque Anapji to celebrate happy events or entertain special guests. Patrick's journey continues through the night. The day will begin very early in this Buddhist temple. Three o'clock in the morning. The wake-up bell is rung before the first service. Patrick, with his camera, is awake as well. Donc, euh, on a pu, euh, on s'est voilà, on s'est réveillé à 3h30 du matin, comme eux, et j'ai pu photographier la première, euh, la première cérémonie du matin. Mais ce qui était chouette, c'est que 
on a pu euh, euh, partager des moments très quotidiens, très quotidiens et en même temps intimes, de la vie des moines euh, qui sont dans ce temple. From the ancient times, dynasties used ideology to maintain their rule and unite the people. After Silla united the neighboring states, it further promulgated Buddhism to bring different peoples together. That is how Buddhist culture came to thrive in Silla. A curious photographer begins tracking the monks' daily lives. Patrick is captivated by the foreign rituals and lifestyles he encounters in a strange land. Where is he headed? As if to answer that question, Patrick's camera tries to keep up with the monk's fast gait. Their destination was a small temple where the elder monk offers his daily prayer. Every day the monk prays to the Buddha with the deepest respect and devotion. Buddhism, a faith once reserved largely for the royal family and aristocrats, came to be believed by the masses during the Shilla dynasty. Buddhism taught that anyone can reach enlightenment even without rigorous training. This teaching took root in the lives of Shilla people. Mais sinon ça s'est très bien passé ça j'aime bien. C'est là que je fais euh, cette image que j'aime bien parce que euh, Elle est, elle est étrange, elle est mystérieuse, elle est mystique. Euh, elle est, euh, on sent une émotion. On est près, près de cet homme et en même temps de dos. Il est dans ça, il est dans son monde à lui. Mm, that's true, yeah. Mm -hmm. Buddhist monks were the vanguards of new learning and ideology, and the spiritual leaders of Korean ancestors. It's hard to take a nap. It's tiring. <laughs> They helped the ordinary people live their lives with peace in their hearts. Morning arrives in Girimsa Temple. The temple's serene surroundings cleanse the mind. But its quiet beauty belies the trials and tribulations it suffered over 1,350 years. During the 1800s, the temple was destroyed by a fire. The buildings were restored but the pond in front of the temple was filled up to make a paved road. At one time, Girimsa Temple had the entire Kyungju area under its fold, but that responsibility was handed over to Pulguksa Temple, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Before his departure, Patrick visits the monk to say goodbye. <laughs> Their time together was brief, but the monk thanks Patrick with a gift. The monk writes with care. Calligraphy, which requires intense concentration, is part of the spiritual training. He writes the word musim, or detachment, which refers to the Buddhist teaching of emptying one's mind. Hoping to present a foreigner with a special memory, 
the monk takes great pains to write the letters. Okay, okay, okay. Come, Samida. Come, Samida. I like uh, I like those two words, uh, patience, because for me it's uh, the symbol, the symbol of the I mean Asian Asian culture in general, and Buddhism, and uh, so and also in photography, you have to be patient. So I like this as well, and uh, and then empty, uh, empty. It's interesting. Uh, I think are uh, connected to Buddhism and to what the monk, the teacher, told, said about uh, this society. Okay, thank you. Come yeah. Samida. Okay, come see. Okay, yeah. In Buddhism, it is said that inyan, or karmic affinity, is formed only after a time long enough for water drops to bore through a boulder has passed. Where will Patrick's karma take him? Bulguksa Temple is the most well-known temple in Korea. Designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1995, Bulguksa Temple is always crowded with tourists, standing in stark contrast to the quiet, low-key Kirimsa temple. As Buddhism spread among the Shilla kings and aristocrats, a highly creative architectural style was introduced, giving birth to the era's signature building technology. It's the Good Engi method, not found anywhere else in Northeast Asia. It involves fitting man-made stones with natural stones to build the foundation. The traditional wooden structure, which stands in harmony with nature, adds timeless elegance to the temple. What scientific principles are behind these architectural techniques, allowing them to stand the test of time? A master woodworker knows the secret to this uniquely Korean building method. He started woodwork when he was only 16. His career spanning more than 50 years was spent building palaces, temples, and grand houses. He can distinguish different kinds of lumber just by their scent. Korean woodworkers, known as Daemokjang, are registered as UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage of Humanity. Et c'est assez impressionnant, parce que c'est des énormes troncs d'arbres qui deviennent des piliers de ces temples ou de ces maisons, entièrement construites de bois. Il n'y a pas du tout de métal, donc c'est ce qu'il m'a expliqué et ce qui est assez impressionnant. A master woodworker should have not only the leadership to supervise the works of other craftsmen, but also the technical knowledge and acumen pertaining to construction. Master Che Ki Young hopes that his students would carry on the tradition of Korea's singular architecture. He also hopes that the next generation would continue the excellent craftsmanship of UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage of Humanity. In 
in search of the embodiment of Korean traditional architecture. Patrick again visits the place where the spirit of ancient Korean architects still lingers. Portals to the afterworld are situated all over the temple complex. Descendants of the ancient kingdom are trying to feel the enduring vibes of such long history. For decades, Bulguksa Temple has been a favorite destination for school field trips. No wonder the temple is always crowded with tourists looking for bits of history to take home. Actually, I'm, I shoot more people and the children uh, than the, the temple in itself. The temple for me is uh, the, de the, the decor, the background, because I'm not a monument photographer. I need the people. Uh, so here, for example, I, it's a counter, counter light, and it's very nice to see the shadows of the people and children. So I am shooting this, and then uh, I'm shooting people photographing themselves in front of the, the temple. If Buddhism was a unifying spiritual force in Shilla, its traditional martial art, Tekyan, strengthened the body, the vessel for the spirit. Tekyan originated from the prehistoric men's need to hunt wild animals. It was a means to defend oneself or to launch an attack for survival. But with the passage of time, Tekyan came to represent the code of physical discipline in Shilla. In Tekyun, your entire body becomes a weapon. The hands and feet move elegantly, as if in a dance, but at every third beat, you use the hands to grab, hit, or guard. The feet are used to tackle, kick, and block, and your body and head to push and headbutt. Having survived the dangers of extinction during the Japanese colonial period, two years ago, Tekyun became the only martial art discipline to be listed as a UNESCO intangible cultural heritage of humanity. It was a very close race, vying for the title against China's Kung Fu. I've heard that UNESCO picked up this martial arts uh, as a treasure, and this is the first, the first time, yeah, yeah first, first martial law, martial art, sorry. Yeah. Why, do you think, why? <laughs> 역사를 가지고 있고 그 역사를 뒷받침할 만한 근거 자료가 있었기 때문에 저희 같은 경우는 오히려 더 유네스코에 등재가 됐다고 생각을 합니다. 어느 무예도 없는 몸짓이고 누구나 그냥 쉽게 할 수도 있지만 그 능청거림이라든가 무릎의 오금질, 어깨짓, 손짓 이런 것들이 다그 안에 녹아 있기 때문에 가능 이 유네스코에 등재가 됐다고 생각을 합니다. Patrick's camera captures even the energetic shouts of Tekyan practitioners. Patrick is headed to a place where the spirits of Shilla's founder, Pakyokose, and the six village chiefs under his command dwell. And he meets a woman who lives among the spirits. Cette image prise devant, devant un ensemble de, de maisons qui appartenaient aussi à la dynastie Shila, faite entièrement aussi de bois, donc ancestrale, devant, c'était assez, assez magique de voir cette vieille dame. Bon, ça donne cette image que j'aime bien parce qu'il y a évidemment un lien entre entre le temps, la vieille pierre et cette vieille dame qui, euh, qui a l'impression, on a l'impression qu'elle euh, qu se fond dans ce décor euh, du passé. Strong spirit and strong body enrich our lives. 
Now Patrik visits a village where old traditions rule. Yangdong village has the most number of traditional structures registered as cultural properties in Korea, from tiled roof houses to thatched roofed ones. Low walls built centuries ago stretch through the beautiful natural surroundings of the village. We photographers are always, you know, looking behind, <laughs> like uh, trying to stealing things. <laughs> Patrick silently steals pieces of their lives with his camera. Uh, this. Hello. No. <laughs> Yangdong village was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2010, together with Hahui village in Andong. Perhaps what is really remarkable about this village is that people actually live here. Two families, the Gyeongju Son family and the Yogang Li family, merged to look after the village for 500 years and carry on their traditions. The seemingly mundane and personal lives beyond the low-lying walls beckon to the master documentary photographer. <laughs> Eagerly entering through the open door, Patrick starts taking pictures. What caught his attention in this ordinary scene? Puis elle, de dos, avec son tablier, euh, dont, dont la texture et le, les motifs rappellent ceux de ses couvre-lits. Donc c'est vraiment un jeu visuel uniquement qui pourrait être euh, d'ailleurs pris euh, ailleurs qu'en Corée. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, a little bit. No, it's perfect. Ah, ok. Ah, comme ça. Comme ça. She hasn't lost the naivete of the old times. <laughs> the generous lady welcomes a stranger to some tea in her home. It is evident that she lives by the age-old Confucian practice of treating every guest with hospitality. This is now the word, the makeup now for yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> so you. <laughs> okay, like a Hollywood star. <laughs> Ah, it's homemade. Mm. In France, it's like uh, we keep, you know, we keep our wine, the wine, not underground, but <laughs> in cave for years and years, and it's getting better. 여기 방에 음. 어제도 민박하고 갔어요. 그런데 그래서 이제 이불을 다 널고 빨고 In return for her generosity, Patrick gives her a postcard featuring his photo. This is a picture I have done in Greece. 아니, 조금이십니다. 사인이라 감사 코멘트 써 놨고요. In the picture it's as if it was real. Real. But actually, this is a, a part of the movie. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. See you next time. Yeah. Bye bye. Around lunchtime, mouth-watering aroma wafts from behind the walls to entice the passerby. <sighs> In Yangdong village, old-fashioned furnaces are still commonly used. The Korean-style furnace has multiple functions, coming in very handy for both cooking and heating. Just keeping the fire alive requires great care. 
où la nature a peu de place. Et ce n'est pas pour rien qu'il y a des quarantiers de touristes <coughs> coréens qui se déversent dans ces villages traditionnels euh, parce, que, parce que justement ça n'existe plus. Et donc euh, à la fois je trouve ça bien que ça soit maintenu et euh, 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 sacralisé comme euh, une mémoire des villages traditionnels. Korean women seem to be able to taste with their fingertips. They never measure anything, yet somehow produce well-seasoned dishes every time. They whip up a delicious meal for a special guest, just as they do for their grandchildren. They even make jeon, Korean pan-fried fish, for this special occasion. Delicious aroma soon fills the house. How will Patrick remember this mackerel side dish prepared by the friendly lady? No salty. Very good. Especially the, the mackerel. Food made with love and care has the power to overcome all kinds of differences. Sometimes men patrol the village on horseback. A dog whose bloodline goes all the way to the Shilla era also guards the village. These ladies of Yangdong village are preparing for a special yearly event. It's kimjang, making large quantities of kimchi to last the whole winter. Korea's iconic kimchi and kimjang practice was recently submitted for UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage of Humanity list. The final decision will be made very soon. So this is paper? Yeah. 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 Tangan. Tangan. Sigutu. Sigutu. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Goguma. Goguma. Yeah. Tonke. Tonke. Uh, yeah. Many things. Yeah. Many things in there. Starting in the early Joseon dynasty, people started using more varied ingredients, resulting in many varieties of kimchi. Before the real cold sets in, Korean women make huge amounts of kimchi to last through the winter. And in the process, they strengthen their sense of community with their neighbors. Le sujet est important, mais aussi parce que j'en ai profité pour faire une composition euh, comme une espèce de ballet de toutes ces femmes qui qui travaillent euh, cette cette matière donc euh, culinaire, ces légumes, et euh, et pour pour montrer c'est vrai ce ce côté de communauté, de chaleur humaine puisque L'UNESCO euh, l'a déclaré euh, héritage mondial parce que, euh, pas seulement pour euh, ses, ses, ses goûts euh, ou ses, ses particularités culinaires, mais aussi pour le côté humain de, de partage, euh, partage euh, ensuite euh, au sein de la communauté. What? <laughs> like this? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone becomes a member of the community by sharing kimchi. The tangy and spicy flavors of Korean kimchi have the power to wipe away the memories of hard work at once. Your mouth waters just by looking at the red sauce and you can never forget the taste once you've had it. The unforgettable flavors of kimchi begin with the chili peppers. The millennium old city is still thriving amid the modern world. 
불국사와 석굴암 그리고 경주 역사지구 또 양동마을 이런 세 가지 유네스코 세계문화유산을 한 지역에 모두 그 모두 담고 있다는 점이 굉장히 특색이고 이러한 점은 전 세계에서 유래를 찾아보기가 어려운 일입니다. In the past, common folks looked to traditional plays and games for entertainment and some comfort. Tightrope walking was a special form of entertainment born from those needs. Risky acrobatic moves are done on a three centimeter wide rope hung three meters above ground. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kim Dae-gyun is Korea's only tightrope walker listed as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. The past 38 years of his life have been devoted to tightrope walking. He first started walking the rope at nine, at an age much younger than his student now. There is no rehearsal for tightrope walking. You must always be totally focused. <laughs> yeah, very easy. <laughs> Him, it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, no, <laughs> cannot. I I can try, but <laughs> I'm not good. Is it as easy as it looks? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Like this? So. Uh, huh. Like this? Ah. Uh. Okay. Uh. Patrick must stay focused and find his balance. Just a momentary slip in concentration can send him falling off the rope. <laughs> As a documentary photographer, Patrick has always tried to be balanced in his attempts to deliver the truth. Now I jump. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's great, but you know, it's uh, it's okay because you hold me. <laughs> you know, I think it's a very good exercise, uh, even for us photographers, because in some some extent, we photographers are rope uh, dancers, 
because it's, we are always in some fragile situations. <laughs> we have to be very careful. <laughs> yeah, it is said standing in the right line is the key to success. But the tightrope walker's rope is not connected to wealth or power, but to the heavens. To tightrope walkers, a rope is like a thread of destiny from up above. Master Kim Dae-gyun tries to carry on the tradition of tightrope walking together with his young students who were brave enough to learn the most dangerous and difficult of all intangible cultural assets of Korea. I, I was impressed by, uh, by all these uh, children, so young and, you know, doing uh, <laughs> rope dancing. Uh, it was very nice and it's also very nice to, as a photographer, to be backstage. Uh, uh, that's what I like in doing photography. I don't like to be like a tourist. I like to be in behind the window, behind the, the, the gate, you know, uh, behind the curtain, in backstage, uh, to, see, to see the real, you know, the reality, I mean, the real life uh, before the show, before the show, uh, for in, in rope dancing, but also before the show of real life. <laughs> what? Maybe Patrick asks the master to show him a bit of his art. Okay. 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 <laughs> Actually, it takes about an hour and a half to perform the whole act. The rope is drawn taut. The tightrope walker takes careful steps forward. Soon he effortlessly glides to the midpoint of the rope. To today's audience, more accustomed to flashier Western-style circuses and acrobatics, Korea's tightrope walking may not be very interesting. Despite the changing trends, however, Kim Dae-gyun has staked his life on tightrope walking. Without his passion and devotion, the tradition of Korean tightrope walking would have vanished long ago. He still struggles to keep the tradition alive, at the risk of his own life. En fait, moi, je l'ai, je l'ai sélectionné parmi d'autres pour qu'on la montre en, en séquence comme une animation. Euh, voilà. Mais sinon, c'était une rencontre, une rencontre intéressante, riche humainement, d'une part parce que j'aimais bien son visage euh, et un peu, peu mystérieux et avec beaucoup d'humour. Et beaucoup de chaleur aussi. Avec, euh... Kim Dae Gyun's dream is to hold a grand tightrope walking performance with his students. That evening at Gyeongbokgung Palace. Kim Dae-gyun is getting ready for a show. Patrick came to see Kim before the performance. Ready to go on stage, soon Kim will again put his life on the rope that's just 20 steps long. Patrick carefully records Master Kim's tense expressions. The time to go on stage nears, but even the master with decades of experience cannot get used to the nervousness he feels before the act. Oh, 
Meanwhile, Korea's colorful traditions are showcased on the stage. Many hours and tremendous amounts of effort must be invested for Korean heritages to be remembered as something beautiful and dazzling. Patrick's photos record what really goes on behind the scenes. All the efforts that go into keeping Korean traditions alive, his photographs only record the truth. When the mind is not at ease, the body feels it. Tightrope walking is affected by even a slight wind or dust. Before the show, Kim concentrates to keep his mind steady. Even with all his experience, the master cannot hide his nervousness. And that's when Patrick catches a defining moment. Uh, je pense que la, la, la meilleure photo que j'ai prise durant ce deuxième projet, euh, c'est celle-ci. Là, j'ai pu faire des photos de lui dans, dans les coulisses. Et puis, derrière la scène, dans cette, dans cette image, euh, où en fait, ce n'est pas lui, mais c'est son alter ego, celui qui, qui va donner le change, comme on dit, pendant le show, euh, qui attendait juste avant d'entrer de, en scène. Alors qu'il y avait deux, deux figures d'autruche comme ça qui dansaient sur scène. Donc là, c'est une image un peu duel qui est divisée comme ça en deux. D'un côté, on a ce qui se passe sur la scène, et puis d'un autre, d'un autre côté, ce qui se passe backstage. The master says he first learned to walk the ropes in his teens fly on the ropes in his 20s, and finally realized what tightrope is all about in his 30s. Now, at last, he has learned to become one with the rope and completely let go of himself. <laughs> Spectators watching from three meters down were just as anxious as the tightrope walker but they soon become immersed in the show. The key to Korea's tightrope walking lies in communicating with the audience. It's a play that combines the skills of the tightrope walker, the wit of a clown on the ground, and the merry music. Recognizing the creativity and complex nature of Korea's tightrope walking, UNESCO included it on the intangible cultural heritage list. The audience is moved by the beautiful movements of these performers. The renowned photographer will remember Kim Dae-gyun, who gained complete freedom on the rope. Spirits of the ancient city of Gyeongju have been awakened to shine on our lives. And the memories of our lives will go on to feed the new spirits of history. That's life itself to me I wake and I feel your heartbeat Going clear and strong I think I can see tomorrow Like it's written on my palm